This is Dr. Peregrino Brima of ENDS, Every Nigerian Do Something. And in this little presentation, I'm going to be looking at um, Boko Haram, which is Nigeria's um, terrorist organization that has been ravaging the north, the northeast of the nation particularly, and its relationship with Chad, our French-speaking northeastern neighbor. Um, the first thing to point out is that the involvement of Chad in, um, and its interest in annexing parts of Nigeria is actually not uh, new. In the 80s, um, the Habre forces, now Habre was the president of Chad before Idris Deby, um, a rebel, took over. So um, the Habre forces tried to annex um, parts of northeast Nigeria and has been interested in parts of our country. And um, that was under the reign of um, President Sheikh Shagari. And the, um, General Muhammad Bahari at the time um, engaged the Habre forces and was able to retake with the Black Scorpion um, forces or something, was able to retake 19 Nigerian islands from Habre's forces. So this was one of the first times when Chad actually came in to try to take over parts of um, our country. Now, when we look at Boko Haram, a lot of people look at Boko Haram and say it started with this Mohammed Yusuf guy and, you know, there was no obvious connection to Chad at the time. Now, this is true to an extent and, in fact, this is one of the reasons why when you look at Boko Haram, lots of times people blame people in the North because, to be frank and candid, the North was not um, really... Um, they did not express any strong opinions against Mohammed Yusuf. Now, Mohammed Yusuf, of course, was a radical, and the Nigerian president then, that was um, Omar Yaradua, eliminated Mohammed Yusuf. So, Mohammed Yusuf first brought this idea of Boko Haram, and it's very important that we that we mention that Boko Haram. A lot of the terror that we find in Nigeria is not even only Boko Haram. So Boko Haram is a nickname which we use to classify these forces that are undefined in the north. Um, you have the Ansaru terrorist group. You have different terrorist organizations who are involved in that process. So it's not really Boko Haram. Boko Haram is this nickname. So that nickname started with uh, Muhammad Yusuf, uh, who obviously was a Nigerian. But when uh, Musa Yaradua killed Muhammad Yusuf and his terrorist agents at the time, there was this vacuum. And the vacuum got filled by certain people. So I've written an article on that, which is Boko Haram 1 and Boko Haram 2. You can find that in um, on the ENDS website, in light of you know new revelations. So this article actually shows what happened and when it happened, when uh, Muhammad Yusuf's group, which is the Yusufia movement, uh, was called Nigerian Taliban, and that's when um, President Olusegun Obasanjo was um, asking about, you know, trying to figure out what was happening, and you know, they were slow to act against these people. So at that time, it was called Nigerian Taliban, and then the nickname Boko Haram came to them. But these guys were wiped out, and then we had a second an infiltration, a foreign infiltration. Now, seeing this vacuum, seeing this, seeing the climate for terror and the laxity of Nigeria's security services, certain foreign interests took interest in this and decided to now fund and powerfully sponsor an invasion through that axis. So a second group of people, okay, terrorists flooded off, came into Nigeria and seized the remnants of this organization. So at this time, if you read this article, you'll see where we talk about it. And in Nigerian dailies at the time, it's described how um, this is all Africa, a story from 2011, where actually the remnants of the Yusufia movement were against this new movement. You know, they found this other group of terrorists who were acting contrary to their doctrine. And the um, Yusufia Islamic movement actually came out and released a press release in which um, they threatened to kill the new movement that had come and was operating in a very crazy terrorist fashion and killing innocent people all over the country. 
So in this press release, which you know you could easily find if you come to this website or anywhere else uh, that it could be found, the original Yusufia, the remnants of the Yusufia movement, said they were trying to avenge the death of their founder. And here I, um, I'm reading from this quote: "We therefore distance our group." from all the bombings targeted at civilians and other establishments and equally condemn them and pray that Allah expose those who perpetrated them and attributed them to us. Exonerating the Yusufia sect from other factions of Boko Haram sect, the statement declared, we are concerned that some people with evil motives have infiltrated our genuine struggle with the false, with a false holy war that's outright un-Islamic. We call on this evil group to desist failing which we shall have no option than to expose and haunt them. Finally, we are resolved to temporarily halt our fight. So what you can see that happened here at this time in 2011, which coincides with the time when the President Goodluck Jonathan resumed in Nigeria, and when there was the Abuja bombing, and suddenly the President was interested in promoting this idea that, you know, there were some factions in the North, you know, he saw it as a political tool, which you could use. So the sus the the continued sustain sustenance of um, Boko Haram at this point favored the president of Nigeria. So he allowed enabled this new sect to take over so that he could prove that yes there are some people crazy people in the north and they hate me so much so you guys vote for me and stuff like that. So that's when he started allowing and not crushing this this um this these 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 second sect of terrorists now this second set of terrorists took over and defeated the first sect so the yusufia movement got eliminated and then we had this new boko haram which was being sponsored from certain people abroad that now started operating crazily and continued doing these things so the yusufia movement pretty much lost this war now, who came into Nigeria and from where? You want to look into that and um, try to figure out when this happened and what happened. This article in um, newsrescue.com, Boko Haram foreign terror via Nigeria's porous borders, um, written sometime in 2013. Now, if you look in this article, you'll see this place here, which says, at the onset of the conversion of Boko Haram, the philosophy group into terror organization, United States cables as reported by WikiLeaks, we're following a certain Abu Majin terrorist identities data environment tied number 24350378, a Chadian national with ties to Al Qaeda, who the US detected was on a mission to organize some sort of terror organization, terror activity in Nigeria. So the United States was actually following this guy, Abu Majin from Chad, who was being sent by these people coming into Nigeria. And that's the guy who, at the time when Muhammad Yusuf is dying. This guy is coming in to establish this new organization with a new motive, which summarily is to eliminate life in the north and northeast in particular and allow that area to be annexed by these French neighbors of Nigeria, um, by all evidence. So, in this uh, WikiLeaks, if you go to the WikiLeaks page, you'll see. Uh, more about Abu Majin. Um, right here. Oh, where is it? Right here. A well trained veteran Chadian extremist, Abu Majin. Tied numbers, limited trade. Has tra recently traveled to Nigeria and may be planning to conduct a facet terrorist oper operation. Tear line from May 1 claimed. Abu Majin been in northeast Nigeria is likely to be joined by other Islamic extremists, blah, blah, blah. So we now see this movement of this guy from Chad coming into Nigeria to establish. So this is when now the new Boko Haram is being established in Nigeria. Now, while all these things are happening, instead of our security forces to be tracking these things, because these things, this is 2009, these things are being tracked by international organizations. This information is open thanks to... Um, Snowden, this information is open. So these things, instead of our security services to be tracking this this activity, rather what they are doing is blaming some so-called opposition for the terror in Nigeria. 
So you have this from 2009 classified information. So these people come in, they come in with money, and then they establish what we have as Boko Haram now. And then you have leaders like um, Bubakar Shekau, the first and the second and the third, as they keep killing them. You have these phony leaders who are, if you if you notice the mission, if you notice, if you listen to Abubakar Shekau, the one thing you notice about Abubakar Shekau and Boko Haram that is constant is they never have a clear motive. The things they say is they are trying to um, annex what? to um, convert the whole nation or convert half of the nation or they never really say what they're about. The only thing that has been constant about them is the genocide, killing everybody in sight, burning every building in sight. And they do that along with Nigerian military. Nigerian military does the same thing, kills the people, burns buildings. In fact, we've seen um, pictures and stuff. Basically what Nigerian military does is it says, this villages that could be occupied by the terrorists their soldiers go there and burn on the village so the terrorists can occupy, occupy it. So one way or the other, you have the whole population of the Northeast being pushed out. So that whole area is being cleansed out um, by the activities of these terrorists. Now, moving on further, how did we know that Chad was involved? To be honest, I've been studying Boko Haram intently. Since the since ENDS, our organization, Every Nigerian Do Something, was established on May 19, 2012, when there was this um, bombing of Sabungari in Kano. Um, since that time, we've been studying, our organization has been studying Boko Haram. We've been studying them for a long time. And to be frank and candid, we did not pick, I mean, we saw elements of this Chadian involvement, but we did not pick how strong it was. But once you look at the map, once you study the map, and you look at Nigeria, you realize that there is no way that this terror can continue to have arms, weapons, supplies, sustainability if they are not linked to something. So usually people look for, you look for the environment, it's called the environment of terror. So what's the environment of terror? Typically people assumed the president of Nigeria claimed that it was the opposition that was the environment of terror. Some people assumed it was the Muslims in the north that was the environment of terror because there has to be an environment for terror. The actual truth of it was the environment for te of terror was the proximity it was the geographic placement of the terror it was the neighboring french-speaking countries that was the environment of terror that people missed so when people were being dragged and fooled and our time was being wasted with the blaming some so-called opposition that the nigerian government could never arrest we were missing the fact that the environment of terror was that proximity that was Chad. These terrorists were being trained and flowing in from Chad, from Niger, from these French-speaking countries around us who apparently had never did anything to stop these terror training camps on their territory. The terrorists were training from there, and that's where they keep flooding in, getting recruits and getting the Janjaweed soldiers from all that axis and bringing them in and bringing the finances and bringing the guns, apart from the guns that our army under General Ike Jerika used to leave for the terrorists to keep picking up. They bring in more sophisticated weapons from that axis. So the free flow was through Chad. Now what's the, how were we lucky to find out about Chad? We were lucky because when Nigeria's president suddenly, when um, Steve, Stephen Davis uh, named former governor of Borno Ali Modu Sharif and um, generally Hejirika sponsor of Boko Haram, we got alerted to this and we said, what's happening in Chad? Because right after the president of Nigeria ran to Chad, okay, he ran to Chad suddenly, had these meetings with Idris Debi, the president of Chad, with Ali Modu Sharif, the name Boko Haram sponsor. Immediately we picked on this, we said, what did he go to do in Chad? So our, our organization actually first broke the story that they are going to Chad. They claimed it was for some weapons thing, you know, weapon supply, which was all BS. Our organization broke news that the reason why they went to Chad was related to Boko Haram, and they are doing something about it, either for or against. We are going to watch what happens, but they actually went to Chad because now they are being exposed. And that was when we focused on Chad and we focused on the personality of Idris Deby. And from that time, we've been seeing numerous links, arms and supplies, for instance, here we have this news in Sahara Reporters, which is Cameroon paid Boko Haram $400,000 ransom. And this was facilitated by Idris Deby of Chad. Okay? Sources disclosed that President was instrumental because of his closeness to Boko Haram commanders. And he actually promised to ensure that the weapons that were going to be given 
would weapons would have safe passage to insurgent fighters Boko Haram fighters so here is a president of a neighboring country of Nigeria actually saying I'm going to deliver the weapons to the fighters so now we now started to see the connection and then there was another there was another case where political associates of Idris Debi again was arrested with missiles for Boko Haram all of a sudden we now start to see how that supply of weapons is coming through Chad bring them from Sudan and the northeast of Nigeria is very fertile with land, oil, resources. Uranium actually seeps from the ground in parts. Uranium seeps like wells. You dig a well in parts of the northeast, you can't drink the water because it's loaded with uranium. So the northeast Nigeria is very, 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 very um, resource rich. So you have somebody, proximity, proximity is there and interest is there. And these people are interested in annexing and destroying that region and taking it over. Now, since then, we've been seeing all this evidence of, you know, people, everybody always has been saying all the time that the fighters in the north going around speak foreign languages. They don't sound Nigerian because these are mercenaries being brought in, flowing freely through the Chadian border, being brought in all the time. You have the suicide bomber who said she's from Chad. The language they speak, they're either speaking French or twisted Kanuri. The fight has basically been an invasion. An invasion has been happening and our president, clueless president, has just turned the other side. He's looked the other way. Okay? So you have this article, Boko Haram foreign terror to Nigeria's um, porous borders. Um, and then, as it keeps going on, we keep on seeing these links. We see this connection. We see the fake ceasefire. There was this ceasefire, the president of Chad advice Nigeria's president to announce and or they conspired to announce and it was definitely a sham everybody knew that it was a sham we opposed it from day one and there was only one reason for that ceasefire and it was to allow Boko Haram get stronger okay so the ceasefire since then the president has not denounced it he has not cancelled it so technically the ceasefire is still on account of our president and that, that was to allow so we suddenly started seeing this, this desperation they are trying they are trying to allow Boko Haram to continue to remain strong and able to destroy that region now this is this is it's, it's a lot this is uh not you know in uh, enough content for just you know a small video there's so much going on this is the latest news and this is when we decided to release this article this is just happening today wednesday um, 24th this was just published and in this article property seized by boko haram cars all the stuff motorcycles clothes are being taken freely to chat this stuff is being taken to chat. So Nigeria is being siphoned. The people are being eliminated. The properties they steal are being taken to chat freely across the borders. There's no resistance to it. This is a sweeping invasion that Nigeria is under. And fortunate, unfortunately for us, the president of Nigeria wasted five years being clueless and played games, lied, um basically s s sacrificed and traded our lives okay we have, we have over hundred thousand people have died let's not play with the numbers over hundred thousand people have died directly and indirectly to the con due to the consequences of this you know limitless terror in the northeast so it's summarily we are having an invasion a full invasion from francophone chad supported by french governments this is a full invasion coming in to annex, destroy and annex. Now, interestingly, CAR, Central African Republic, Chad is reportedly doing a similar thing over here. At this border, you have shared oil wells, and Chad is doing the same thing. Okay, it's doing the same thing here. There are reports where Chad, Chadian gendarmes um, fired, fired and killed over 20, killed people in markets, shot randomly, killed people in markets, but foreign forces, the foreign nations, left them. And didn't hold them to account for that because they used them as so-called stabilizing forces. But it's the same thing. So Chad, because foreign nations, United States, France, depend on them for so-called operations, freedom, um, peacekeeping operations in this area. Chad, continue, the same type of instability is organized here. So CAR never explores its oil wells. Chad is drilling the oil wells alone here. Chad is drilling the oil wells here. It's a long story. We'll continue this in the next part.